Hey, didn't see you there. Ahoy. Welcome to this Tuesday episode of SpaceX in the News. I'm Kevin, broadcasting from Ohio, where the weather is just damn beautiful. I hope where you're at, the weather is gorgeous as well. Let me ask you guys a question. Is it seasonal depression if you're at your happiest when the sun's shining? What about when you're only happy when the sun's shining? Anyway, let's get to why we're all here. It's a new week and testing has commenced down there in Starbase, Texas as SpaceX continues to strive to put their first Starship Super Heavy Mars rocket to Earth orbit. Now, briefly during our last episode on Friday, I was able to announce in real time that SpaceX was lifting Booster 7 off the orbital launch table and placing her on the nearby crusher stand. It looks like that kind of testing could be commencing today or later today, or maybe the next week we do have road closures in place, possibly for that. So keep an eye on Lab Padre stream guy because you know they have 24 seven live cam coverage going on down there as we speak. Meanwhile, over the weekend, in fact, it started on Friday, SpaceX began moving Starship 24's nose cone to the high bay where it met up with its payload section and was subsequently stacked. Local photographers, RGV aerial photography and Starship Gazer with photos for our convenience. Now, Ship 24's payload bay is expected to be Starlink capable, and by that I mean be able to house Starlink satellites. But my personal theory, conjecture, uh, speculation is that Ship 24 will never put Starlink satellites in orbit. Now, if we go back to last year, the last thing we heard was the plan was to put the first Starship in a quasi-orbit, just short of a full orbit, and, and splash her down off the coast of Hawaii, Elon always likes to put fun payloads in the first flights of these rockets like they did a Wheel of Cheese with Falcon 1. Uh, of course, Falcon Heavy's first flight, its demo flight had a Tesla Roadster and Starman in it. So we don't know what any kind of payload would be for this first Starship launch, but I would very seriously doubt they're going to put any st Starlink satellites up on this. I don't, I don't know anybody who would think that. So the reason that I believe that they are allowing 24 to have Starlink capable hardware in it to contain it in the payload bay is maybe to just test out the, the payload bay hardware in and of itself to make sure, yeah, they can stack Starlink, Starlink satellites in there. Because remember, the plan now is to test out a, a PEZ dispenser-like mechanism to project, you know, stack all the 20, stack all the satellites up and project them out into space one at a time instead of all at one time like to do with Falcon 9. So maybe just testing out, can they fit them in the, the payload bay this way and maybe the mechanism for dispensing them that, that's just, that's my theory. That's, a, that's Kevin theory. Very well could be wrong. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. So this next topic, I would consider the big news of the week thus far. Elon participated virtually uh, at an event in Beijing's embassy in Washington on Saturday on space exploration and, and what China's involvement and future involvement in that is. Now, everyone who's honest can tell you straight away that the CCP isn't exactly the most trustworthy uh, government in the world. They are known for propaganda peddling, especially with their own citizens on the level of like North Korea. But what was particularly disturbing about this event was their target audience. It wasn't Chinese students. It was American school children, teachers, their parents and embassy staff. Oh, and journalists. And keep in mind, and this is kind of weird, it was just a few months ago that the Chinese government was lambasting and criticizing Elon Musk and SpaceX for creating a hazardous environment in space with their Starlink satellites. But this is what Elon had to say at this event. I'm so glad to be speaking to you right now. I think the grounds for future cooperation in space are amazing. And I look forward to humanity working together to form a self-sustaining civilization uh, on Mars and other planets, uh, which I think will be very important for the long-term uh, prosperity and survival of life as we know it. So uh, hopefully this is simply one step towards a much greater future for all humankind. Thank you. I know some of you right now are thinking to yourself, what's so bad about this? Elon is just calling for international cooperation in space. And you know, it's not like the United States government is all altruistic and I'll be the first one. I, in fact, I've admitted it in recent episodes and episodes in the distant past. I do not trust this government right now for all of the obvious reasons, that which was stated and that which was not. But we need to consider who we want to get in bed with when it comes to these kind of endeavors in the future. You know, a lot of people like to say, United States isn't better than these other communist countries. Actually, I would say that we are. 
But not only is China committing genocide against the Uyghur population, putting them in concentration camps, making them do slave labor that a lot of, a lot of U.S. companies are exploiting, uh, they're currently committing human rights violations against their own people, you know, by locking them down in their apartments for weeks and weeks, confiscating their pets and having them murdered, taking COVID positive people to these quarantine camps against their will. Oddly enough, I think they might've learned that from Australia. You know, the Chinese Communist Party is known for embedding spies in our universities <laughs> and even in the very beds of our American politicians. They're not exactly the most honest people when it comes to intellectual property. They're caught stealing trade secrets all the time. I highly recommend the China Hustle if you if you really want to understand just how how far the reach of their tentacles go. I recommend Peter Schweitzer's book Red Handed, where even Elon Musk has his own dedicated chapter. Elon used to be critical of China just a handful of years ago, but then he went and built a factory in country. And that is something to be concerned about since SpaceX does use some of the Tesla's technology. And China is not exactly being shy about imitating what SpaceX is doing. So ever since Elon made a deal with China to open up his Tesla factory, he's had nothing but good things to say about him. Just like the businessmen and politicians who came before him, he saw that market open wide up. And, you know, Elon might argue that, well, his intentions are to help the country move to sustainable energy. And that might be true to some extent. Let's not lie to ourselves. China has no intentions in the near future to transition into renewable energy. They might make all of our solar panels and wind turbines, which is just another incentive not to buy them, as if the fact that they kill wildlife and are uh, not very efficient yet isn't reason enough. But uh, yeah, it's been nothing but firing up coal power plants in the communist country, as, as the rest of us suffer from high energy prices, because we're suckers. It's fine, Elon Musk fanboys, throw your hate my way. I'll take it. Despite all this, I'm still a fan of the Musk. I'm just a bigger fan of the truth, even when it hurts. But uh, speaking of rich politicians who can definitely be trusted to have your best interest in mind, <laughs> millionaire socialist Bernie Sanders went to the floor of the Capitol the other day to inform everyone that evil billionaires have taken over space and left nothing for the rest of us. Take it away, Burns. I worry very much that what we are seeing now is not a space race between the United States and other countries as to which nation will return to the moon or perhaps get to Mars. But a space race between Mr. Musk and Mr. Bezos, the two wealthiest people in America, as to who will gain control over NASA and future space explorations. Elon responding with his go-to favorite meme for the burn. In other SpaceX news, Elon Musk confirmed on Twitter why they were able to keep such a stable connection during Axiom 1's booster landing on Friday. It's called Starlink bra. So hopefully what this means is that we can all expect to be spoiled like this with these uninterrupted drone ship landings. But after their weekend launch, the first all private crew to the space station made their way there, coasting along with the Kraken. Rendezvousing with the station on Saturday and then making a soft dock immediately followed with hard dock. Space News reported that South Korea has awarded SpaceX to launch five satellites on the country's behalf by the year 2025. North Korea still exists and South Korea is unfortunately their neighbor and China's nearby as well. China has nukes and ways to deliver them and North Korea, God bless them, they're dreamers. So, you know, South Korea kind of has an incentive to want to know what's going on and these satellites are going to help make that happen. I'm trusting they're not going to spy on me as I sunbathe topless in my backyard. The uh, lawyer wife is a fan of their Korea Aerospace Research Institute. And last on the list, don't forget that SpaceX is targeting Friday for launch of their Enrol 85 mission. That's a spy satellite for the National Reconnaissance Office, taken out of Vandenberg Space Force Base, California. T-0 is slated for 6.41 a.m. local time, that specific time. And I will be streaming this one on Rumble. So if you haven't yet, check out the link in the description below and subscribe over on that platform. We want to do our best to show some love to those who are pro-free speech and want to cancel cancel culture. Well, that's all for today, but thank you so much for tuning in with me during your, your busy work schedule. Those of you sitting in the cubicle right now with your earphones in, trying to dodge the boss while you watch the show, appreciate you. Or you students who are in class right now, not paying attention to teacher because you'd rather be here with us. You know, if I was still a teacher, I'd give you bonus points. And of course, our members on Locals who are supporting this content and making it happen for the rest of you. Until the weekend. Godspeed.